Hello again, everybody. I'm Tony Hager. Welcome to Takedown TV, your source for what's trending in amateur wrestling. In front of a rack record 6,754 fans, number 16 Rutgers played host to 6th ranked Iowa on Friday night. In his home debut, sophomore Nick Suriano stormed out to an 8 point lead over Justin Stickley, hitting 3 takedowns and 4 point near fall in the first. Suriano continued to push the pace, securing his second tech fall of the season to put the Knights up by 5. Scott Del Vecchio made it back to back bonus point wins, putting Paul Glenn on the mat just 20 seconds in at 1. 133. The redshirt senior tacked on takedowns in the second and third before clinching a 12-4 major with riding time. The rack was rocking and Rutgers just kept on rolling as John Van Brill used a first period takedown and a third period escape to edge Carter Happel 3-2 at 141 pounds. Second rank Brandon Sorensen gave the Hawks their first win of the night breaking a third period tie with a takedown and riding time to defeat DeLuca 4-1. All-American Michael Kemmer brought Iowa back within four, hitting six first-period takedowns on his way to a dominating 24-8 tech over Brett Donner. In his long-awaited debut, Alex Marinelli fell behind two points early against Richie Lewis, but answered with a second-period takedown and sealed the win with a single leg and sudden victory. A controversial takedown gave Iowa its first lead of the night at 174 as Joey Gunther picked up the 5-4 decision over Joseph Grello. Ninth-ranked Nick Gravina put Rutgers back on top, blanking Mitch Bowman 4-0 at 84. With the Hawks now trailing by one, Cash Wilkie picked up a commanding 8-3 win over Kevin Mulligan, setting up another winner-take-all matchup at heavyweight. For the fifth time this season, Sam Stoll did what he does so often – pinning Gross in the first period to keep Iowa's undefeated record intact. I have everything turned out. My thoughts right now, not good. You know, I thought we had an opportunity to win a big match, and we, we let one go tonight. You know, two, uh, two big matchups there in the second part of that, that match, 65 and 74, and just uh, got away from us. Got to find a way to close those out. To beat a really good team, you got to do that. You got to close out those matches, and that's kind of my thought process right now. So obviously, it stings a little bit right now. I think they knew what they were walking into. We expected a crowd like this. If we had picked up those dual meet or those individual matches, won this dual meet, then I think it would have been a lot different. But uh, you never go out there just to compete. And I think tonight we kind of just competed, but you got there to win. And if we had won this one, it, that's where you would have got that respect. You don't want to get respect from losing got away from us and that's kind of the way I feel I know that's the way this, these, guys, these guys feel and you know you want to win these there's opportunities out there for us you know there's opportunities and you got to take advantage of it. these opportunities don't come around that often and you know like Nick says they're a fun team they fight and scrap and claw I don't know if they're the best athletes but they scrap man they're really good in position and there's no moral victories we, we let one get away and this one will this one will sting a little bit we'll get back at it with them at the Midlands uh, and there's an opportunity to win a team title there, and that's kind of what we'll shoot for. We've got a whole lot more college wrestling to cover. Takedown continues thanks to Casey's General Store. Stay tuned. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's Pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too.
for the sixth straight year, we're back inside world's most famous arena this past Sunday. The Grapple of the Garden opened with a high-scoring D3 showdown that saw John Hopkins down New York University 25-20. And the D1 featured dual 10th ranked Virginia Tech picked up a 26-16 win over Princeton. The duel started at 174 with the Hokies piling up four straight wins in the upper weights before closing with victories at 133, 41, and 65. In the final matchup of the event, Hofstra powered past George Mason, beating the Patriots 26-9. The Pride picked up wins in pairs, starting with decisions at 97 and 285, and then later at 133, 41, 65, and 174. Special thanks to Dylan Wanagle and everyone at Madison Square Garden for their commitment to our sport, bringing wrestling in the most famous arena. In other East Coast action, 5th ranked Lehigh picked up a pair of conference wins over the weekend. The Mountain Hawks punished Penn in the opener as Jordan Cutler scored 14 points in the first and secured the Tech fall with a second period escape. It got worse from there as Jordan Wood locked up Tyler Hall at 285. Cortland Schuler used a headlock for a 31 second pin over Joe Oliva at 49. And Cole Walter picked up a first period fall against Ryan Farber. After beating Penn by 35, Lehigh got a little bit of a wake-up call in their duel against Drexel. Cutler kicked things off with a 5-1 win over Austin Rose, but sophomore Paul Dunn was pinned by Owen Brooks in his first start, giving the Dragons an early 6-3 advantage. Lehigh would retake the lead at 97 as freshman Chris Weiler knocked off 20th ranked Steven Loazzo by major decision. Wins by Wood and defending national champion Darian Cruz put Lehigh up 13-6 at intermission, but Drexel pulled back within two thanks to a first period tech from sixth ranked Austin DeSanto. Luke Karam delivered a big win in bonus points using a third period takedown and four and a half minutes of riding time advantage to defeat Chandler Olsen 9-1. Drexel's Trevor Elfman knocked off Cortland Schuler in a high-scoring affair, 14-7 at 149. But Ian Brown answered with a third-period takedown defeat, even Barzak at 3-2 at 57. With Lehigh up by seven, Cole Walter had one job: don't get pinned. What happened? He got pinned. Trailing 10-5, Drexel's Ebed Jarrell got the fall to tie the score at 20. But Lehigh escaped on criteria after winning six of the 10 bouts. You know, there's two extremes, you know, pen match, I mean, everything kind of flowed, went our way, and then tonight we were in a, we a dogfight. I mean, uh, they came out ready to wrestle. We knew they would. Um, they got a lot of bonus points on us, um, and we were fortunate we got our bonus points when we got them. We knew, you know, we knew, we talked before the match, we said bonus points were going to be huge this match, uh, and they were. You know, it came down to that was the difference of the match. You know, coming in, the effort's been good all, all fall. Um, we just, we, you know, we saw some areas we really got exposed in, at least some individuals, I should say, because I think six of our six of our guys wrestled really well, you know, and, um, but we, we got it, we got to control our minds deep in those matches when, you know, that's where we're usually strong. And today, for some reason, we just kind of lost control and a little bit of focus, but that that's something we can fix pretty immediate. Um, but we, you know, we got to build off of this, build off the whole fall. We got to get ready for the sudden scuffle. We got finals coming up here in a couple of days, so. Um, we kind of got to regroup, get healthy right now. We got a lot of guys banged up, so we got to get as healthy as we can for the Southern Scuffle. Redshirt junior Zeke Moisey earned his third pin of the season as West Virginia pummeled Pittsburgh 24-10. Moisey scored a pair of takedowns and two back points to go up by five, eventually pinning Brandon Price with just 20 seconds remaining in the match. Pitt even the score at six with back-to-back -back wins at 133 and 41, but freshman Kyler Ray pushed the momentum back in the Mountaineers' favor with a 15-3 major against Alessandro Murray. Freshman Nick Kustis scored two reversals on his way to an 8-3 upset over 16th rank Jake Wenzel. Parker Von Egede picked up a 10-2 major over Austin Bell to put the Mountaineers up by 14. Redshirt senior Jacob Smith returned to the mat for the first time on the season, securing a 5-2 decision over Kellen Stout. Sophomore Brandon Nagati dropped a major decision to 13th ranked Ryan Solomon in the final bout at heavyweight, but the Mountaineers get their first win of the season 24-14. After competing without half their lineup last week in Las Vegas, Minnesota returned home with a full roster on Friday as they faced Fresno State. The Gophers won eight of the ten bouts on the day, all eight coming with bonus points by the way. Mitch McKee, Tommy Thorne, Ethan Lezak all picked up falls. Ohio State might have to send that pin chain up to Minneapolis. Jake Short, Nick Wanzik, Chris Farr, and Bobby Stevenson all won by major decision as the te home team came out on top 38-7. 
Minnesota will now get a few weeks off before hitting the road on December 29th for the South Beach Duels in Florida. The Wyoming Cowboys claim their first conference win of the season, defeating Iowa State on Friday night. The Cyclones open the duel with a win at 25 as Jacob Allison pinned Trent Olson. Redshirt freshman Montre Bridges was able to turn the tide with a win at 133. Then second-ranked Bryce Meredith put the pokes ahead, pinning Canaan Store in the first period at 141. Wyoming won four bouts out of intermission. Iowa State closed the duel with a 5-3 decision by Marcus Harrington, but it was not near enough as the Cowboys came out on top 24-14. Wyoming will return to the mat December 17th for the Reno Tournament of Champions. Big news out of South Carolina. We'll tell you all about it after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Matt. Stay tuned. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Presbyterian College has accepted an invitation to join the Southern Conference starting in the fall of 2019. The South Carolina-based school will simultaneously launch the first women's program in Division I history. It sounds like a lot of work, which is why they've hired Mark Cody. The former American University and Oklahoma Sooners head coach has been named the Director of Operations and will lead PC on its journey to Division I. Joining us now is our longtime friend Mark Cody. We missed you, Coach. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first off, you know, again, you know, congrats uh, on the position. Congrats on being part of just something very special for our sport, right? You know, down there in South Carolina. I appreciate that. We're really excited. You know, uh, uh, this year I've done a lot of soul searching and wasn't sure what direction we were going to go. But once this opportunity came up, I, I was very excited about it uh, right off the bat. As soon as I had talked to the athletic director and. You know, heard their vision for the program, I was really excited to, to look into it. I mean, not only is this great, I'm, I'm sure for you, you know, as, getting back into the sport, but it's, this, is, this is really big for the sport in general on two levels. One, a new men's wrestling program, and then the first D1 women's program. Uh, I'm not really, you know, looking at, uh, you know, social media and stuff. I'm not sure fans really have grasped yet really what has gone down here this last week. Uh, I mean, how are you? How have people been uh, reaching out to you, or how, how's been the input 
from uh, your end? It's been incredible, particularly the people from South Carolina that have been reaching out to me. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, there are seven states right now that have women's state championships. There's, there are 15,000 girls wrestling in high school right now. So, you know, needless to say, I've been hearing uh, from a lot of coaches in a lot of states that don't even have uh, state championships for, for women's wrestling. So it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. And, and particularly hearing from the people in state that are just excited about having another Division One program in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, down southern southern part of the country, I feel like wrestling is growing a lot right now, the, the boys and the women. So I think this is a, a perfect time. Timing for this is, is really important. And uh, was it important for you, I mean, timing-wise, did everything just kind of fall into place? Or how, how did this position get approached to you? You know, timing-wise, it worked out great. You know, I got a call from the athletic director about two months ago. And uh, he had mentioned that, uh, you know, they, they were thinking about starting wrestling. And, and what he did was he reached out to Mike Moyer at the National Wrestling Coaches Association. And Mike walked him through the whole process as far as, you know, what they needed to do to, to get started. And, uh, and I think throughout that process, Mike just made it uh, much more attractive to them than they even imagined uh, when they first started thinking about adding uh, Division I men's and women's wrestling. And, uh, you know, the NWCA was just very instrumental in, in getting this done. You know, Danny Sterling, the athletic director, who's just been there for a year, uh, really is, a, is an outside-the-box thinker. I've really learned that in the short time that I've known him. And, and uh, he's not afraid. You know, this guy is, uh, has the courage to move forward and uh, really try to try to implement both of these programs. And, and you know, he's already got us in a conference. You know, we're, we're in, the, in the SOCON. And... and uh, that, that got approved uh, a couple weeks back, and uh, uh, he worked on getting us a, a temporary facility. Um, and, and he's just been, you know, full speed ahead as far as uh, uh, having things in place right now just to, in the short term before we get uh, a, a facility built. And uh, so he's just been, it's been incredible. Our conversation with Mark Cody will continue in just a moment. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Welcome back to Takedown. We're once again joined by new head men's coach and director of wrestling operations at Presbyterian College. Coach, you know, looking back at uh, your time in Oklahoma, you left a great program at American, and um, you, know, you mentioned being able to be a CEO. Were you just were you not be able to do that at Oklahoma? Is that is that the difference between American to Oklahoma? You feel? Well, I I think it was it was a little bit different maybe in that respect. Um, uh, there were some things that I felt pretty strongly about that I thought uh, would be important to the development of the program. You know, my, you know, I learned 
pretty early on that you know you build it slow and you build it strong, particularly when you're bringing in a new philosophy. And um, you know the I, the timelines I don't think really really matched up with really what I thought was important. You know I. Uh, I have pretty high standards for my student athletes when I bring them in. You know, I think it's a privilege to be a Division One college coach, and I think student athletes have to uh, also treat it like a privilege when they come in. And no matter what your role is on the team, you know, if you're third string, you're going to get treated just like a first stringer. Uh, and 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 again, for you, if you're a walk-on, it's a privilege to walk on to any program. It's a privilege to be a scholarship athlete, and I I think you have to treat it like that. And I also you know, I, I'm big on, on, on the guys working hard and training year round and, and living the right lifestyle. And, uh, you know, because you go out to compete, it's your lifestyle versus your opponent's lifestyle. I think that's very important, something that, that we push uh, really hard. And, and if you're not in with that, 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 I don't think that that really works. And that will slow down your progress uh, as far as moving forward. Now, uh, eventually you'll get there because people will know that, that you're serious about what you're trying to do. and and unfortunately, you get tripped up sometimes along the way with 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 uh, commitment of, of, of maybe certain student athletes, and, and I think that's more heart wrenching for sometimes the coaches than it is, is for the kids. And, and uh, so, you know, to be frank, I think that um, you know I felt uh, like at American, I, I, I was I guess more the CEO of the program, and, and I think they were a little bit. They were very on board with the vision. Now, when I was in Oklahoma, that was a great learning experience too. And I worked with a lot of great people there, and, and I, I still value the friendships that I have that I've developed over the years there. But uh, but it was just very different uh, than, than I expected it, it to be. You know, as you kind of game plan for what you take, you know, what you did at American, what you did at Oklahoma. I know there's probably a hundred steps, right, to make this thing this work and get it off the ground but let's just say there's a three-step plan what is your next three steps that has to happen for uh, this thing to, to take off here yeah well I think the first thing I'm going to do when I get in there is is uh, to get around the state and meet as many coaches in state as I possibly can and just make sure that you know when, when I was at Nebraska when I coached there uh, Tim Newman who was the head coach at the time he was great at reaching out to a lot of the coaches around the straight and a state and bringing them into the fold and it was it was just wonderful it really helped our attendance it helped our camps it helped recruiting in state and and it and and they would uh always have a place that they could go to uh, uh and, and feel a part of something the high school coaches in the state there so i'm, I'm going to get out and do that as much as i possibly can early on um and then of course recruiting you know i think we're, we're going to recruit nationwide you know of course uh, right south of here, Texas, I'll be recruiting there quite a bit because, the, the, you know, women's wrestling is huge in Texas and I'll be out in California. And um, then I have to put a coaching staff in place. And I think that, that that'll probably, uh, I'll probably uh, have that done by the end of, of January is when I expect to get a couple coaches in and to get help with that and, and just uh, make sure that the people that I do bring in have the same vision that I do for the program. You know, we, you know, I, I was asked about how you're going to schedule things and I think I'll schedule just like we always have. You know, I, I want to get as tough a competition as we possibly can. I really don't believe in, in dumbing down the schedule. Um, uh, I think that we're, we're going to go after those same quality athletes that I went after here when I went after American, when I was at Oklahoma State, when I was at Nebraska. We're looking for committed uh, athletes that are going to train year round. They're going to live the right lifestyle. And, and uh, that's going to be a big part of what we're going to do you know, going forward. But to, Hit the ground running. I think it's very important to make sure that everyone in state knows that um, you know this is going to play, be a place for them to to you know come and, and, and have an open door policy to, to help them with anything that they might need. So I mean, it sounds like you're going to have your assistance in the next 60 days. Did you have candidates already before you committed to this, or did you accept the position and then kind of people have been applying here the last couple of weeks? No, I've actually uh, been talking to a few candidates. I haven't really, you know, opened up the process, but I have been talking to a few candidates to see if, uh, if uh, you know, if there was anybody that was interested. And I do have a, a, a couple of people I'm talking to right now that I think 
uh, it'll be very impressive if I can uh, land these coaches. So <laughs> I like to, I like the sounds of having them side by side. And uh, coach, again, congrats. We knew you would uh, land on your feet, and uh, we appreciate the time. I appreciate that, Tony. And again, I, I want to just. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you having me on. And again, with, with all that Mike Moore has done for our sport, uh, this is just another great example. You know, we'd, we'd probably be seven programs. I know there were seven programs that are now out Division One programs. We wouldn't even have one for Mike Moyer. And what he's done to get this thing up and running, you know, I, I just I really appreciate, you know, everything that the NWCA does, period, but let alone him helping to circle the wagons and get this uh, Presbyterian University up and running. It's just been awesome. So. Keep uh, we got to keep uh, growing wrestling. Women's wrestling will help uh, men's programs, and uh, obviously the NWCA has been uh, and very important in that the, in those efforts. And uh, kudos for you for you know taking this opportunity and running with it, and and uh, I say taking a gamble, but I mean it, this is something that not a lot not a lot of people would do. Uh, not a sure thing. So kudos to you for taking the spot. Well, great, Tony. Thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate it. That will do it for this week. Special thanks to Rutgers, Iowa, West Virginia, and our good friends at Madison Square Garden. Don't forget, you can find all the breaking news along with weekly prizes and the longest-running radio show in our sport anytime at TakedownWrestle.com. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Tony Hager. We'll see you next week for another edition of Takedown.